So how is it that your favorite pianists are able to basically just sit down and produce an endless supply of new chords and voicings, always voicing melodies beautifully, doing reharmonizations, etc.? Well, that is the question that I want to answer in today's video. It's actually a lot simpler of an answer than you might think. In fact, I was asked this question in a masterclass I was recently teaching for jazzpianoschool.com. Shout out to Brandon over at Jazz Piano School. They are awesome over there, so check them out. But here's what I realized. If you're anything like me, you've probably spent hours and hours learning a specific voicing for a specific chord. On this one song, I have a voicing for G flat major. On this other song, I have a G minor nine chord, right? Always having that specific voicing and then whenever I see it again on the page, I need to get that one voicing. Well, here's what I'm gonna teach you today. Today, instead, I'm gonna teach you to think in terms of scales and shapes and simply shifting one shape to fit different scales. So instead of thinking, here's my F minor voicing, and then here's my D major voicing, and then here's my A flat dominant voicing, and always having these different voicings under our fingers, what I want you to leave this video with is the ability to instead take one single shape and then shift it to other chords that you need. A flat major, G major, F sharp minor, down to F minor, let's do F half diminished, B flat seven, right? So we're just taking a single shape and learning to shift it with simple voice leading. By the end of this video, you're gonna understand exactly how I got there and what you need to do to get there as well. And therefore have basically an unlimited supply of voicings. Be able to sound a lot like the intro that I did to this video. Let's dive in. So the first concept I wanna chat about is something that I learned from the great Taylor Eichsee. Taylor is an absolutely phenomenal pianist, monstrous pianist really, and also an incredible educator. And one concept that he talks about is the idea of simply getting really good voicing shapes into your hands. So in other words, step one is stop thinking about voicings in terms of the individual voicing and the numbers that add up to make that voicing, and instead, just think of that as a shape. So for example, here's a voicing that I like. This is a really pretty minor 11 voicing. If we break it down in numbers, we've got one, five, flat three, 11, flat seven, and nine. So in Taylor's philosophy, the important thing is not the actual voicing itself, but the shape that it produces in our hands. This is a bit of a strange stretch in the right hand, right? But as we practice moving this voicing around, we're basically just getting this shape really conditioned into our hands so that it's comfortable. So if I'm playing and I need a minor voicing, I might just throw my hands down and it's just it's just right there, right? So what I would recommend doing to actually just get a specific shape under your fingers is following my voicing mastery methodology. I actually have some videos on that on YouTube. And of course, it's also taught in both my Jazz Piano Secrets course and my Jazz Piano Evolutions course. Links in the description. But the most important steps being, we're gonna move it intervocally. So we can move it in half steps just to really get it under our fingers. We could also move it in whole steps. Also minor thirds. And as we master that, we are able to now move this voicing into all keys without actually having to think about the transposition of it into different keys using numbers or theory. Now there are other parts of voicing mastery. In fact, part of Taylor's method and also part of my method is diatonic voicing movement. So we'd actually move it through the diatonic scale. I actually probably got that from Taylor originally, which is something I realized when I was actually doing a podcast episode with him, which will be coming out very soon and I'm very excited about that. But the point of this video is not a whole voicing mastery method. In fact, what's important now is once you just get the shape under your fingers, what else can we do with it? How can we actually forget entirely about the theory and have this voicing give us almost unlimited voicings? So the really important mental shift here is we're gonna start thinking in terms of scales and the scales that correspond to chords. What do they actually look like visually on the piano? And therefore, what notes are available to us? So in the case of this, F minor 11 chord, the corresponding scale is F Dorian. And here's where this is fun. Next, I'm gonna say, I wanna just shift this chord into being F sharp Lydian. So we actually have to move up a half step and use this scale. F sharp Lydian, right? I'm not gonna think hard about my voicing. All I'm gonna do is just look at the keyboard and be like, hmm, which notes don't fit F sharp Lydian? And I'm just gonna 
shift into F sharp Lydian. Now, can I guarantee that I've played this exact voicing before or that it's the perfect voicing structure? Nope, I can't. But guess what? It doesn't matter because it's pretty close in shape to my original. And now we're in F sharp Lydian and it sounds lovely. And what if now I wanted to actually shift to, let's say, E Dorian. Okay, that's really pretty too. And now I'm gonna to shift to F Lydian. So each voicing is a bit different. The structure is not exact, right? But we're close. We're close enough and we're getting some beautiful sounds. So again, now that we're thinking in terms of scales, it doesn't fully matter if the voicing is perfect or if I've practiced it before. I'm literally just shifting my notes from scale to scale, just moving the note to the closest possible place in another scale and trusting my hands to create something that sounds good in terms of voicings. At the end of the day, it probably is going to sound pretty good. And here's the thing. Let's take now a totally different shape. Let's just take a, uh, this time let's take an F minor cluster. Super clustered sound, but it's nice. So we've basically just got the F door hand scale here. Now I'm gonna make a G flat Lydian. So all I had to do was just get rid of this G because that's not in the scale. And I know visually even, I'm thinking visually, what notes fit in the G flat Lydian scale. Okay, now I'm gonna do G minor. Okay, cool, now A flat Lydian. How about A sus? How about B flat sus? I'm basically just playing the scales as a chord, more or less, and just shifting the notes around. So what I would encourage you to do is start with a voicing that you've messed around with, and then practice just shifting it around. Here's another shape, F minor. Let's make this E major. Let's make this E flat minor. Maybe I'll shift this here. And let's make it B flat major. And then G minor. G flat major. G half diminished. And then let's do uh, G flat dominant. It's a bit more of a sus sound. But you should get the point here. I'm just taking my hands, trusting the shapes that they create, and then I'm just shifting between different tonalities. And because of that, because I'm able to quickly see which scale I'm in, I can quickly shift basically any voicing in any different iteration, any different shape to fit that next chord, that next scale. Now, I'm not saying that you're gonna be able to just sit down and do this exactly like I can, but with this mental shift, you should actually be able to start thinking a bit more visually, letting yourself release and let go of constantly needing to think of an individual voicing for every single chord coming up and instead start practicing taking a single shape and switching it up from chord to chord. Don't think about new voicings. Instead, just think, how can I keep modifying this voicing to fit the next chord? Also, quick shout out to the Modern Piano Voicings Dictionary. That is a dictionary of basically 400 plus different voicing shapes that you could actually look at as a nice reference to get under your fingers. They're all beautiful voicings that I've practiced myself, and you can actually use those to practice this shifting technique as well. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel and you got something from this video, please smash that like button, it really helps me out, and click subscribe and hit the bell to turn on all notifications so you don't miss any more videos just like this one. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.